Hello everybody, welcome back to Real Life with Mike. And today's video is gonna be a video that I've been trying to, or planning to do for quite some time now. And it's gonna be the final walkthrough of the Ultimate 12 Foot Smokecraft. Um, of course, when I bought this boat, it is a 12 foot, uh, it's a 20, 2019 Smokecraft uh, Alaskan TL. And that's a, you know, 12 foot, uh, 12 foot tinner. Uh, the boat was completely empty. Uh, it was just basically a shell and of course I custom built all of this myself. So I'm going to give you a little bit of walkthrough right from front to back, kind of how I did everything, why I did everything. Hopefully you enjoy the video. Uh, if you do, please like, please subscribe. Uh, yeah, there's definitely going to be more videos to come. So let's get into the boat and I'll show you how everything is. Alright, at the front of the boat I am running a uh, Minn Kota Power Drive 55 iPilot. So this is a really good unit. Uh, I think it was about 1600 bucks when I got it uh, a couple years ago. Uh, I really enjoy it. I mean, especially with the new boat, uh, I think this definitely will be able to power it as well. It is a 12 volt system. It does have the iPilot um, attachment to it. So basically, instead of a foot pedal, you're going to be using remotes. This is the remote that comes with it. I'm not a big fan of it. It is quite, not saying quite heavy, but it is heavy. It is a little bit bulky. So I ended up uh, opting out for the, the micro remote. The micro remote has everything you need, uh, you know, start, stop, uh, speed up, speed down, spot lock, nor setting. Those are all the ones that I, I end up using anyway. So this is the one I majority, uh, majorly, wow, majorly? Anyway, I use all the time. Uh, like I said, this, the only thing that this remote has is um, you can do link setups or, or kind of track your routes. So you can track your route, store it in here, and then you can press go to and you can continue going on that route as well. So like I say, I really have nothing uh, nothing against the Minn Kota Power Drive 55 other than the manual uh, deployment and stuff like that as well. But that's not, not a big issue. So of course that does go through uh, a custom plug that's on top instead of on the side. I like to make it a little bit more compact so that way you actually have a place to kind of stand on here as well so with that 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 power source goes through this compartment I'll show you that compartment in a little bit and then of course it does run into the uh, main battery compartment at the front of the boat this front of the boat uh, battery compartment is holding my 54 Dakota lithium um, it does go from power source of course to a like a breaker or fuse style switch and then goes over to an on off switch so you can hear it kind of click in the reason why I like that is that you can actually manually turn it off if you're going on a long trip or something like that, you don't need this powered on all the time. And then of course, just for, you know, any electrical surges or anything else, the uh, the breaker switch is always nice as well. So I had to make a custom bracket. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in here, but it is a custom bracket that holds that in there. I've never had an issue with this thing bouncing around or falling out. I should put a strap on it, but I mean, like I said, in the last couple times I've gone, this has no issues whatsoever. So that's the Minn Kota 55 power drive for you. Um, I say great unit. The way that everything's hooked up worked really, really well. I said, I don't know if you can kind of see that here. Like I said, that's all uh, uh, custom put in uh, by myself as well. So. All right, next thing we have in line is going to be um, Cali's Fish Finder. This is my old Fish Finder. It is the Garmin Ecomap Ultra 75 SV. Um, it is a really, really good unit. This one does come with some really good mapping software and everything else like that as well. Uh, it does have one foot contours, which my 102, my more expensive unit does not, which is really, really weird to me. Um, but overall, this is a really good unit. It is linked back together with my 102. Uh, and basically all it does, is it allows uh, both units to, to kind of go together or, or network together in general. All the wirings do go into this little compartment here. Like I said, I'll show you this one here. The wiring does feed up into here, goes through the front of that compartment. And kind of open this up. Then of course it does come through here and I actually have electrical chases that go through the, the side of the boat here. That's this tube here. Now that's a three quarter inch PVC tube that I heated up and, and melted, uh, not melted, but uh, shaped to the inside of the boat. And of course I do have one on this side as well. They do run all the way to the back on both sides. This one you won't be able to see because that's where the electrical compartment is. So the reason why I do have, so I'm just gonna turn this all up here. 
So yeah, the reason why I do have the two separate batteries here with the, the 54 Dakota and the 18 uh, Markham battery is because every so often with the trolling motor going on, um, you would get some uh, weird uh, kind of static signal with uh, the, having them connected together. So I decided to do them separately in the new boat. I'm gonna figure out how to do it. Um, maybe a little bit different, but that's the reason why I have this. Now, of course, that 18 on here also does have a special cradle that that fits into. Like I said, I'll kind of take this one off here. I'm just gonna turn off my turn off my uh, finder here, and I'll show you how tight this stuff is. So to take this out, I have to just lift up and slide out. So that's really, really tight with that. And then, of course, this uh, lithium will pull out this way and lift straight up. So this took me probably, this alone probably took me about a day to figure out, at least like a good five, six hours um, manufacturing like the, the brackets and everything else like that. So out of the whole boat, other than the actual framing that I've done in the boat itself, this is probably one of the most difficult uh, parts of it. All right, now other than the finder on the front, I actually did a separate USB port here. Um, basically this one here will connect up into a USB port so if someone uh, or your passenger at the front wants to plug something in, charge their phone or whatever else, they have their own separate uh, USB plug here. Of course all that wiring does go through here and it actually runs off my um, 23 amp hour Dakota at the back which I'll show you in a bit. So the way the framing is in the boat in general, everything is done with aluminum. I'll see if I can open this up for you and you can kind of see. Everything is done with aluminum, um, one eighth inch aluminum, either C channel, uh, angle or flat flat bar. Uh, that took a long time as well. It was really hard to figure out how I wanted to do my steps. I didn't want to have this all the way across because then you have a big step down. Then also you have your battery compartment. It, it took a long time to figure out. So with that all being said and done, of course, that's how I did all the flooring and everything else in here. Of course for us, uh, we just have the net put into uh, one of the little side supports here. This can just slide out and then we can take the net out as well. So that's just where we like to store it. We do travel with it in there. We do keep it in all the time. Uh, it works for its intended purpose. I'm not a big fan of having it sticking up somewhere. I don't know, it's just a personal preference as well. So for now, like I said, we just put it up, put it in. And then kind of put the handle that way. So that way, like I said, it doesn't go anywhere. All right, so the next uh, thing I'm gonna walk through is kind of the layout, how I did everything here. So I do have the, the front step, the, the bow plate there. Of course, when this boat was original, it just had the shell, no flooring, anything else, just bare, bare aluminum. They did have a seat here, and then um, this was open for a little teeny chunk up here. So I ended up making a bow plate for that so I could put the trolling motor on. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is how I had to, to shim my trolling motor. I do have a video on the, the YouTube channel as well. You can see that aluminum shim that I had to make to make sure that the, that trolling motor was flat. So that was a, another little difficult task or project that I had. Everything else in here is carpeted with an outdoor carpet. Uh, you know, same thing. I mean, for me, I wanted to do vinyl, but vinyl is a little bit more expensive and I didn't want to do the whole vinyl until I found out how I really like my setup. So this is how it's going to be. The, like I said, all the flooring and everything else has a uh, cross bracing 1 8 C channel that goes all the way through. Same thing with this floor has 1 8 C channel and 1 8 bar. I think it has a uh, 1 8 uh, angle in between the hatches as well, just to give it a little bit more support. But all this stuff is super, super sturdy. So basically I ended up making my box. I'll kind of slide this out here so you can see it. This I actually had to build on the L side. I'll just move this out of the way for you guys. So basically I have to build this on the outside. It's not fully attached yet. I got to figure out how um, I'm going to actually attach it to the inside, but this will sit really, really level. It is going to be off the ground. I am going to put flashing tape around the in uh, inside so uh, it doesn't damage the uh, difference between the pressure treated and the aluminum. Uh, but of course, when everything's all put together, it's pretty tight. And like I said, this is just going to be a small cooler box, more for like water bottles, anything else that uh, that's going to be needed. This lid will fit perfectly on there as well. This fits nice and tight around that corner. And once it's all screwed in, this will go right up and that'll pretty much match it right to the, the base of the box. But so far, that's how, uh, how far I've gotten. This one I am going to leave completely open. Uh, like I said that in a couple other videos. Uh, that way at least I can have some, some room there. The only thing I might do is add a 
uh, a divider here with either a plexi or uh, some sort of plastic, uh, more just to prevent stuff from sliding all the way in. The back, of course, you have your seat here, and then I have compartments on the back, which I'll show you in a bit. That's gonna be the gas tank and some storage on the back there as well. But all of this is framed with that uh, 1 8 inch um, angle and seat channel as well. So on the front, I made a couple compartments. This one here, it is quite large, it is quite deep. Uh, that's where Cal usually stores, um, you know, extra clothes, uh, you know, rain pants, whatever else. Super nice to have. And then I just lined it with that rubber matting. Just so something doesn't wear away, not really wear away the aluminum, but uh, it's just a little bit more protected if it does get wet, then at least uh, there's kind of a gap in between there. This back one I just custom made. Um, it's more of a little drink cooler. It is just pressure treated with... Um, with a painted style plywood in there not like you're putting ice or anything in there it stays cool in there you could always put an ice pack but this is more or less to hold some drinks maybe a little bit of storage or some some food and stuff the reason why i did have this off centered and a smaller one i actually wanted to do a long one all the way through but if your passenger is sitting here and they have their feet down they're always gonna have to move or something else to lift it so that's why i went with the smaller one here um, like I said, all this was really well thought out. Uh, well, I think it was really well thought out. Everything's cons uh, considering, you know, how to sit, where to go, how to access. I wanted to make it as easy as possible. Of course, I do have a couple of uh, just a sticky measuring tapes. Those are just for quick measure. I do have an actual bump board as well uh, in the back. Uh, each person has their own drink holder. So, I mean, you just got to have a drink holder. So I also put a couple of these, uh, they're actually for ore handles, but I'll have Cali's rod that sits over here and it just clips in here. And then as you can see, it kind of does the same thing with my rod here. My rod does have one at the back as well, so that way it can't come out. It is pretty, it does click in pretty good. I've actually traveled a long way with this uh, the way it is. I'm not overly concerned with it. It's super stable. Um, that's just a good place to kind of hold the rods for storage, either when traveling or uh, even if you're going from, from spot to spot, it's nice to be able to click that in and you don't have to worry about it uh, kind of sitting around in the boat. Of course, I do have the bump board. This is just sitting here. Um, it's a good place. Uh, it is a Wally Mafia one. If you haven't seen them, definitely go check them out. These are really, really good boards. They do have the marks um, for the Master Style Fish on there. I really like this board. I do have a bigger one as well, but this is the one that stays in the boat. All right, for the back, don't mind the doors. They're, they are pretty dirty. I'm gonna be uh, cleaning them later on today. It is supposed to rain, so we'll see how that goes. But this is my storage compartment. Same thing, it's only about, this one's probably about four or five inches deep. So I have the same rubber matting that goes all the way underneath, as you can see. And then I just have a couple containers. I have some drinks, some water. Most of the time, uh, I won't have this many drinks. I'll have one spot for my minnows, um, maybe some bait buttons, and I have some rags and everything else like that some fuses uh, a couple tools there that's kind of what this spot is here for me uh, i don't really use that this all that often it's more or less kind of for storage for backup stuff in case i need it in the future so that's uh my storage area other than that i do have this secondary storage area here all right so this back area is going to be the kind of the electronics part of it so this does have my um, connection for my finders and everything else like that as well i have that my bilge, my lights, um, my USB socket. So this one here is gonna turn on my USB socket and the USB socket up in the front. So we can, um, you know, we can both charge uh, different, different accessories or whatever else we need to on there. On the inside here, it's a little bit dusty and stuff like that as well. I do have, I mean, this is kind of Callie's idea. Just put a couple uh, goggle holders in there so that way at least when you're driving, you're not crying uh, crying all day and getting stuff in your eye when you're driving out of the boat as well. So I do have all my wiring coming through. Uh, the reason why I had to separate all this is I don't like my transducer cables and my power cables coming in contact because same thing, it can create that little bit of static. So I'm just turning on my, my other finder here. There we go. So I do have the GLS 10. This is a live scope, um, the live scope black box. This is gonna be powered in through this switch as well. So that's gonna power on my live scope. This is gonna power on my, um, my finder here. And then of course I'm running all that through a 23 amp hour Dakota lithium as well. Uh, I get probably about 10, 10 hours on the 23 with the Garmin 102 uh, Ecomap Ultra and the Livescope all attached to it. 
not the longest time. I was eventually thinking of getting another 23 to fit it in here or getting another um, 54 and remodifying this and placing the 54 in here just so I can have it separate. I mean, I could go with one big battery run everything all at once, but same thing because of the trolling motor, it can create some static. So uh, this is just my little custom made, um, I guess, connector for my, my live scope transducer. And then like I said, black box, all my electrical. Electrical's a little bit messy. All this stuff is just, uh, does come out. I'll kind of give you an idea on this. So this does slide out. There's a little bracket in there that holds everything together as well. Um, I do have some storage in here. Sometimes I'll have like some stickers, decals, maybe a shirt or something I'll put in here. But realistically, this is just my electronics. Uh, usually I keep my GoPros and uh, extra batteries in here as well. But like I said, other than that, the way everything's all wired, um, the same thing with my, my wires for my finder here. Everything all comes out really nice and smooth and, you know, super clean. All right, one other thing I did uh, end up adding, it was recently for a tournament because it's starting to get darker, is lights underneath uh, this front seat here. So this is kind of just rigged together for now. I Eventually when I take this all out, um, I am going to be putting a secondary switch over here. It's just, uh, this was just because it was a last minute decision. So I do have the lights that go on here. So this switch will turn it from white to blue. And then when it's on, I can also do the second switch which interlinks them together and turns both on. So you can do blue, but it goes blue and white, or you can go white and then go white with blue. The reason why I like to do the, the multi is that way you have all the LEDs um, on at once. It gives a little bit, a little bit brighter of a, you know, a little bit brighter of, a, of an area to take a look at. So this strip, all it is, is I took a little chunk of aluminum bar and then attached the the light to it and then of course screw that aluminum bar underneath the seat so it's it works really really well of course it's hard to see during the day but uh, that little bit of extra light on the floors here especially when you're catching fish or if you're measuring this works really really well like I said this was a last minute decision I will be kind of tidying all that up in a little bit all right at the back of the boat this is my station here this is the only place I ever sit. Um, Callie kind of has free reign to do whatever she wants up here. I will, this is my area here. Uh, so with this in general, like I said, um, the only negative thing with this is because it does have the bench seating here that I can't put my legs forward. I do sit like this a lot or I do cross my legs um, or just have my feet straight out. You know, it is kind of it is kind of comfortable, but after about six, seven hours of that, it does get a little bit tough to, to do so. So, I mean, it definitely works for the style of boat, but I, I end up doing a flat part of here. And like I said, I'll show you these compartments in a second. So I run the, let's so turn this on here. I run the Garmin Ecomap Ultra 102 SV on the, the back for myself. Of course, this is live scope compatible. So is the 75 as well. I used to run the 75 with live scope, but because the screen was so small, uh, especially when we were ice fishing, I decided to upgrade. So like I said, I'm running the 102 here. It is networked together. That goes through the uh, through the electronics box and then through the um, the wire chasing here and then of course into the 75 there. So that's where the network cable will run. This is a really good unit. I absolutely love this one. The only negative thing on this is for Garmin not to have one foot contour maps on their expensive unit is ridiculous. Um, you do have to get uh, a separate map that's that's for it. But I mean, overall, geez, see if I can find one here. Overall, it still has some detailed um, mapping. It's just not nearly as good as uh, the 75. So it does have some pretty good mapping on there, as you can see. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, it's pretty hard to see on there. Um, but yeah, it does have some pretty good mapping on there, just not as good as the 75. Turn this off. All right, so other than the finder, the other thing I really, uh, probably one of my favorite things about the boat is the custom fuel gauge here. So I did have this, I'll open this up in the back here and I'll show you when I get to the back. But uh, I do have a sending unit in my tank that goes up till here. And then of course this can be manually turned on and you can get your gas reading here. The reason why I added a switch is I didn't need this to be uh, drawing power or on all the time. Um, you know, other than wasting wasting battery, it's more or less so I can check. So I like go around, go through, okay, still have a lot of gas turned off, not a big deal. Um, that is 
definitely something I'm going to be putting in the new boat because the new boat doesn't have um, the fuel gauge as well. This is super easy. I think I have a video on my channel. If not, I'll be posting a video soon on how I hooked up my fuel gauge as well. So other than that, I do have a, a tachometer here. This does my hours. I only have 71.3 hours on the on the Suzuki 20 outboard. Um, I used it more or less for when I was doing my prop selection and everything else to get my proper RPM and speed for the outboard. All right, moving to the back, I'll go to this corner first. All of these are, um, they do have just regular handles. I put these straps on here because it makes it a little bit easier and they are all lockable. This one here is a pretty deep storage compartment. It's about 14 inches deep. I'd say maybe 15, 16 inches wide by 18 inches long. So it is a really deep um, storage unit in the back. So of course, this is where the seat is. This is all just open in general. I have some extra rope. Usually I keep my life jackets here. Um, I just take them out for night because I just don't like to leave them in there. So this is a really nice storage unit here. This is a lot of storage for pretty much anything you want. Sometimes I'll put drinks and food in here as well um, for longer trips. This one here took me a while as well. So this one is going to be kind of a dual function. Um, the biggest thing with this was making sure that even with the motor there, I could open everything up completely. Now this does have a couple of my soft plastics and stuff like that as well. I do have some containers. Um, I did take a whole bunch out of here um, because of the fact that I didn't want to have to remove everything when I'm showing you what's underneath here as well. So with that, like I said, this just holds a whole bunch of my, my plastics. They usually will sit upright. I can fit um, five across and then I can fit three high on this as well. The reason why I did this flooring here is because of the fact that um, it was kind of an unused space. I actually had this flooring here to start. So I could actually, when I'm sitting here, I could actually put my leg in there and sit, like kind of straddle the seat. But I didn't ever really sit like that. So I decided to make it into a storage area. So if I take this out here, kind of a little, it's not really a hidden compartment, but a compartment here. This does have some oars at the back. It does have my bilge at the back here. So it kind of protects everything you know that's under here in general that way you don't have to worry about your bilge getting uh bumped or anything else like that as well not the easiest access for my oars but i mean realistically i'm not going to use them that often so taking this little panel out is not going to hurt me so let's see if i can get this one back in here Hard to do with one hand. But yeah that fits in there nice and solid it's not going to move anything and then of course now i can use this for storage. This is like I say, it's a pretty deep storage as well. Uh, the door opens completely, which makes it a little bit easier for access as well. So other than that, like I say, it's, I'll see if I can do this here. Um, if you can see how tight all of this is, it basically is as tight of a setting as I can do. It does rub on the seat when I open this this way, but it can open up that way. So um, like I said, it is built exactly the way I want it. This kind of stuff doesn't bother me because of the fact that I know, um, you know, I'm not gonna be in there all the time. And usually if I'm gonna be using plastics, then the that case stays out with me all the time. I'm gonna have to get out of the boat to show you the, the gas tank and everything else like that as well. But so far that's the back the back part of the boat here. Hopefully, hopefully this all makes sense. Um, there's a lot of rambling going on. There's so much cramped into this little 12 foot that it's crazy. Get out of here. All right, so at this back compartment, I'll open this up. It's kind of nice because I actually use this as a wedge to hold it up. I was actually gonna put in a, a little, not pneumatic jack, I forget what they're called, but anyway, a little, uh, little jack there um, to hold the door up, but I mean, the arm for the uh, motor works as well. So this is an absolutely huge tank for the back uh, of the boat, but it fits perfectly. Um, this is how I attached my sending unit. Now, this style of uh, gas tank did not come with the sending unit. I actually ended up going to Princess Auto and buying this and installing this myself. Uh, the reason why I know I could do this is because it's a little bit hard to see without actually getting a camera in there. But this actual oval here, instead of being thinner plastic, it's actually quite thick. Um, and that's, I actually saw a custom one from Scepter uh, that has a sending unit built in. So basically this can be modified to do so. Um, do I recommend people putting in their own fuel tank sending units? Maybe not unless you really know what you're doing, but I mean, that's how this sending unit uh, gets attached. So of course you have one to your sending unit, one to your ground, 
this wire of course will go to my tack for the the fuel gauge and then other than that that's pretty basic all right so same thing with this i did notch this out slightly i should have notched this out a little bit more like i did the other one because if this is straight it will bump on there um with the handle down i mean you'd have to cut the whole thing out that's not gonna be the biggest thing i wanted to do it or have access when the handle was up now the only reason why i didn't like that big hole there is otherwise you're going to be showing a big chunk and i didn't like that so i did make it a little bit smaller the outboard does have to be slightly tilted to be able to lift up so like i said other than that it does work for that size of tank and everything else it it works really well and then of course i just have my my rope tucked in the back so that's not flying around everywhere as well and like I said, all these compartments are lockable. So that's basically the build of the boat. Like I said, it, it's gone really, really well. Um, it is custom to the way I like it, but it's also, it's also really tough. I've changed this, this design. I've changed the, um, the compartments. I've changed the wiring probably seven or eight times over the past. Um, I, I think it's perfect for me the way it is right now. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to suit someone else, but to me, this is the ultimate smoker craft. Um, just because I don't know if there's any other 12 foot that is outfitted like this one. I am running the Suzuki 9.9 .9 on here. Now, yes, it is underpowered for, not really underpowered, that's probably pretty typical for a boat this size. But uh, I ended up converting this 9.9 .9 to a 20. Like I said, with this kind of, um, I guess, framework for that Suzuki did for the 9.9 .9, is the same framework for the 15 and the same framework for the 20. So I do have another video on my YouTube channel on how I converted this from a 9.9 .9 to a 20. Um, basically changing the ECU and the restrictor plate on the inside. Now instead of a 9.9, .9, I am running a 20, uh, 20 horse on here. The 20 horse on the 12 foot smoker craft goes extremely quick. We go about 40 kilometers an hour um, with the uh, with the boat, which is just unbelievably quick in a little 12 foot. So I do get a lot of looks uh, from people wondering like, as we're driving past them, of course they're in like 16s or 18s and yeah, they're going faster, but not much faster. So it's a little bit weird when you're going through and you're looking at someone else and they're kind of giving you a weird look being, being like, it doesn't make any sense. So this ultimate 12 foot smoke craft is tuned perfectly. Uh, I ended up having to uh, do a little wedge here. You can kind of see here and here because the motor was set pretty far down. So I ended up putting a, a wedge here to make it perfectly, perfectly flat to the bottom of the boat here. So that's basically how you want to adjust your, your outboard as well. So it took me a long time to get this set up, how I did my adjustment and all that stuff as well. On the back, you can see the two plastic parts here, the um, the wave whackers or splash guards, whatever you call it. These ones are custom built by me as well. Um, being a small boat, especially doing, uh, you know, some tournaments that we've done this year, uh, with the bigger boats going by, there is a lot of water that can come in. This is probably one of the first things I built. Uh, it is a plexiglass that I, I heated and bent uh, to kind of fit custom into this area. Same thing with this. It is uh, custom fit as tight as I could do it so I could get as much uh, coverage as possible. This one does have a big gap out of there because same thing with the handle, as you can kind of see there. So those splash guards too, same thing. They're all custom built. Everything in here is 100% from my own design, just from my mind. All right, guys. Well, that is the walkthrough of the Ultimate 12 foot Smoker Craft. Um, not much to say. I mean, I kind of said everything in the video. Uh, other than the fact that this is probably one of the only projects I've done in quite a while where I have built, taken apart, built, taken apart. Um, I've redone this probably about six, seven times until I had a perfect setup for me. So uh, it's been a little bit of a struggle, a lot of uh, trial and error, but uh, that's the big thing about building boats. You never really know um, until you're at that spot. So with everything, the like I said, the way it was built, um, I've had a lot of people stop and comment, be like, you know, what size is that boat or, you know, um, what have you all done to, uh, to the boat and stuff like that as well. I'm like, yeah, it's a 12 foot smoker craft. I mean, not much to say. And like, a lot of people have questions like, how do you do this? How do you do this? So that's why I decided to do the walkthrough. Um, some people may like it. Some people may not. Uh, I know some, I've had some comments with people commenting on pressure treated wood uh, on the aluminum. I did take care of that because any place it does touch the aluminum, I do have a separation in between um, just to make sure it doesn't come in contact because there can cause some corrosion to it. So yeah, there is a lot more thought going into here. Like say all the little things from 
storage compartments to uh, the wire chases so that they're all covered instead of just running underneath the floor. Um, everything has been pretty well thought out. Um, I think it's been thought out. But if you have any questions or comments on how I did any of this, please feel free to comment below. Um, I'm more than welcome to, to kind of answer any questions. I'm not a boat builder whatsoever. This is just a hobby that I do. I'm kind of a builder in general. So to me, this wasn't too bad. It's more kind of playing around and tinkering than anything else. So with that being said, like I said, I, I enjoy this, this 12 foot small craft. This is, I mean, it's my first boat. This is always going to be my boat. I absolutely love this thing. Unfortunately, I did end up picking up a uh, 165 Alumacraft. That's going to be at the beginning of next year. So this may not be around next year. I'm going to be super sad to see this thing go. But whoever gets this boat, I guarantee you it's going to be, uh, they're going to enjoy it. Uh, they're going to know at least they got a good build out of it. So other than that, um, this is the final walkthrough of the Ultimate 12 foot smoke craft. Hopefully you guys enjoy. Please like, please subscribe. I have a whole bunch of videos that are going to be coming up. I'm going to do a lot with that, uh, alt, or sorry, the uh, Alumacraft 165 as well when I get it next year. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions. Until we see you on the water again, keep it real.